Man, you know, it's interesting. Like I, I, uh, I, we discussed this earlier. I interviewed your brother, uh, you know, Cracker Jack, who is basically an Australian wrestling legend for people who don't know, go and check out Cracker Jack. He's been around for 20 something years and is a staple in the Australian wrestling scene. Uh, you yourself have, have broken in over the last couple of years, but from my understanding, you actually have a background in, in combat sports, uh, Muay Thai and shoot fighting. How did it, how did you sort of come into wrestling, man? Like, did we just getting sick of the shoot fighting? Like what was the, the thought pattern? Yeah. Well, I always liked wrestling. Like I grew up around wrestling, did a little bit of training in it with, um, Cracker Jack and my other brother, Logan, who wrestles for a bit, <clears throat> but then moved away from that, got into martial arts. Because I was more worried about um, fighting, self-defense was sort of my calling at the time. They moved more into pro wrestling. And it wasn't until, like, I don't know, 10 years or so later, that I just got tired of competing, of, um, you know, starving myself, being a hungry fighter. But I still wanted to be competitive and active. So it was an easy transition of pro wrestling from there. And it was always there because, you know, my other two brothers were always doing it. I had friends that were always doing it. It was just a natural progression from there. So what sort of shoot fighting were you doing, man? Like, were you doing Muay Thai, MMA? I started off in um, traditional martial arts. Like, I uh, started with Taekwondo, and then <clears throat> I moved to Korea to get more into um, their other style, Hapkido, which is sort of like Aikido, but they still do kicks and all that kind of wussy shit. And it was from there that um, I had a friend that was in the Philippines who was saying he should come over and start learning uh, weapons training, like their Arnis, which is um, stick and dagger fighting. But while I was over there, <clears throat> while I was living in Korea and I went on a holiday to the um, Philippines, there was a guy there I met who was coaching mixed martial arts. So instead of actually going there for any kind of weapons training, I ended up getting sort of tangled up in mixed martial arts. And um, I ended up moving there after that. <clears throat> was there for a few years just fighting, training, whatever. Um, and after I finished <clears throat> sorry, mixed martial arts in uh, 2012, I had my last fight. Um, I got into freestyle wrestling and competed in that for two or three years in Melbourne. But the scene's really small in um, amateur wrestling in Australia in general. Like you'll In America, for example, they'll have seasons and they'll get to compete every single weekend. But here you'll be lucky to compete fucking three or four times a year, as well as really limited amount of training partners. So I kind of got tired of that, but as I said, I still wanted to be active. Yeah. And man, you're a big dude. Were you were you a heavyweight when you were doing all this? Uh, my first pro fight was actually at heavyweight. I fought at, um, I was 200 pounds. It was fucking stupid. I, I had to get on this because I was in the Philippines. And I was yeah. just sweating and losing so much weight. I couldn't fucking hold on to anything. So uh, <clears throat> I had to jump on the scale fully clothed in jeans, heavy t-shirt, everything. My opponent, this, <laughs> this massive Ukrainian proper heavyweight gets on the scales they're just his little panties. He was, he was like 230 pounds. So my first fight, it was that heavyweight. Big mistake. And then after that, I started cutting weight to um, 84 kilos, which there is, that was their light heavyweight for the promotion I was at. But yeah. universally, um, 84 kilos is middleweight. Yeah, wow. And I've packed I'll, I'll... on a lot of muscle since then. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, once you, you, you sort of started to get, you know, decided to make the move into pro wrestling, you know, you know, was it straight away you were talking to your brothers going, hey, how do I start getting booked? How do I start getting, you know, proper <laughs> training? Uh, you know, what was the progression into that for you? Um, well, I've always had friends in the scene, like um, my friend Kellyanne. Well, she helped me get into it. But um, I always knew George, the hitman, Julio. So I've met him mm-hmm. a few times just through wrestling, that kind of thing. He was always a really welcoming guy. So I started training down there with um, Kellyanne or Mad Dog McRae. I did a lot of sessions with him in my early days. And they sort of helped me through a lot of it. But it wasn't until like eight months or so that I started getting booking. And I, I didn't even hook up with Crackers until maybe, I don't know, six months into wrestling career. Because he just saw that I was getting used like shit. I wasn't wrestling anyone that was actually going to improve me. It was just everyone was <laughs> making me worse. And I was getting worse. So it wasn't until then that he actually intervened and um, improved everything there. Went out. 